Welcome to the Speaking Podcast. You can find all our episodes on speakingpodcast.com. We're also on BitChute and YouTube, and you'll find the links in the podcast description. I also have the Awakening Podcast, Learn Polish Podcast, Meditation Podcast, and Crypto Podcast, and all can be found on RoyCon.com. Today, my guest, fellow podcaster and coach, please welcome Fiona Cuts. Thank you. So you might let the audience know, who's Fiona? <laughs> so um, I am... I'm going to start with this. So I'm the creator of Shining Beyond Shy, and I was so shy in my childhood and early adult life that there's no way I'd have been sitting here on someone else's podcast or even creating my own podcast. And I love empowering other people to be able to speak up, share, and share what they know. It's like I just love seeing other people come out of their shells, I guess, in the way that I have done too. Excellent. And shyness is something that I am very familiar with because I was extremely, I tell you how shy I was now. When I was growing up, I wouldn't go into the shop. I used to give my friend the money for the shop. When I was 18, when we started drinking, I was a good boy. I didn't drink before that. I wouldn't go up to the bar. I used to give my friend the money to go up to the bar. And even in work, when I was working, I was doing very well in work, very competent. But when it came to meetings, like I would have been on big jobs and you'd have the architect, the client and everything. And my voice used to go, I used to tremble. And it's only, I suppose, five years that I started my journey to, to change that. So I know exactly how it feels. Well, isn't that interesting that you and I both have that, that it was something that was so difficult for us. And now that we've changed it, we're like, okay, let's get this out into the world. And sometimes I think it is like that, that what's been, if you like your wrongness, becomes your strength and the thing that you love to share. Yeah, and I, I think the fact that you experienced it, you can then relate. Whereas there's sometimes there's people that haven't kind of gone through the journey, but kind of see a niche in it and then are trying to help people. And I don't think it's the same. I think, and that's the same in a lot of uh, industries. It's like the people that help you best are those that have overcome it. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I still know the agony, like you say, your voice trembling. And it's like, do I really have to do this presentation? And I was very good at getting out of doing presentations, but the time always came when I had to do one and it was horrible. <laughs> So how shy were you? What were, what were the experiences that you went through? Yes, can I, can I be more shy than you were? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> so I was, um, yeah, I, I guess that I was very retiring as a child. I used to take myself off to the woods and, you know, do and talk to myself with imaginary friends, to be honest. It was more fun than interacting with real people. And I did find the world, if you like, quite challenging, almost like I didn't understand what was expected of me. And I found that the best thing was, was to kind of check out and not really say too much. So... Yeah, I remember at school that my teachers were always like, well, Fiona, you're so bright. Why didn't you share what you know? And I was like, ah, and it felt somehow like I couldn't, that I wasn't able to. And yeah, I guess my life continued like that, that I was, people looking at me outwardly would be like, oh, she's pretty successful. So I used to be an accountant and I I had quite a successful, I mean, a very unusual accountant career, but a very, quite a successful one until in every job, it came to the point where I needed to step up and be able to explain what I was doing to an audience or um, talk to customers and things like that. And I just found it impossible. Well, so basically you have, because I, before we started, I think it's your 49th episode of the podcast. You're about a year into it. So you're kind of covering all topics relating to shyness or what exactly is the... the yeah. yeah. So I guess it starts off with looking at shyness and the voice and expression. And what I found is that actually shyness can relate to all aspects of our lives. So for me, I wasn't only shy to speak. I was very shy about moving my body and dancing and stuff like that. And even you asked me how shy I was, I found it hard to be in a room full of people. And that was that was even before I opened my mouth because I didn't like people even looking at me and seeing me. But beyond that, I think if you're shy, it 
affects also the very way that you create your life. And when I use that phrase, create your life, that's not something that I grew up with. I didn't know about creating your life. I was basically given the option of being an accountant or a lawyer and kind of got on with it. But now when I look at actually making choices that create the future, I see that as a shy person, I was very limited in what I was able to choose. I wouldn't be willing to choose things that made me different, wouldn't be willing to choose things where I could shine actually. And this is partly where the title comes from, Shining Beyond Shy. And I see you have guests on it, but you do a lot of solo episodes as well on the show. And like, I found that difficult because it's like you're basically talking and there's no one around. It's so much easier to have a conversation with somebody or I do a co-host with stuff. That's easy. But I found when you're doing a solo show, do, do you, you obviously find it because I've listened to, it, to the episodes like, in, you know, you're obviously confident in doing it. And did you find it hard at the start? Did it seem strange? Yes, I did find it hard at the start. And I suppose it's something that I've grown used to because I think like you, I'm, I'm, I would, when I started my journey of sort of coming out of my shell and speaking, it was much easier if someone said, hey, Fiona, what do you think about this? And I could be like, oh, I think this, rather than just speaking. And through the work I do, the facilitation work I do, I found that even before I was doing the podcast, when, when I um, was, say, presenting something to a group, I kind of challenged myself to be able to talk about the topic before questions started to come in. And in fact, I found that I needed to talk about the topic because if I didn't, the questions would kind of come in too early. It's like there were things that I needed to be able to say to set the scene. So I guess before I'd started doing the podcast, I had built the muscle about being able to talk about things that are related to shyness and things that are related to self-development. And you've, you do workshops, I presume they're related to shyness and stuff like that. So you might talk because, I mean, most of my guests, they've all do workshops. Everyone has their own different way of doing it. So how do you structure yourself and how, like, how long are your workshops? Yes. So I, I do a variety of different things. So I'm trained in something called access consciousness. I'm an access consciousness certified facilitator, a bit of a mouthful. And um, basically, access consciousness is about empowering you to change any part of your life that isn't working for you. So I've specialized in changing shyness. And so the things that I offer, are everything from the free podcast to I'm just developing a 10 week program with, um, well, with group meetings where we meet to discuss and unlock different things that keep us locked up as shy people. So that can be anything from stuff. I mean, I, I had a time when it was hard for me to leave my home and I have clients like that whose shyness is so severe that they literally can't get out of the door. And so we start with that in the program and then we move through right to creating your life. But what I've also found with people who are shy, it's like it's a bit crazy because it's like, here's my group program. Come and join my group program, but you're shy. Oh, so you might not be able to come on the group program. So I also, as part of that program, have individual facilitation with people every week. And the, the individual facilitation starts before the group. And, and one of the things that I love to say is that I changed my shyness actually without talking to anyone. <laughs> so the tools that I use, you can listen and stuff changes. I mean, at some point you will start to talk to people, otherwise why would you do it? But you don't, at the beginning, if, you, if you're like, I'm so shy and, and most things out there about changing shyness are really about, well, just get on with it. Or, you know, you have to give it a go. And that would never have worked for me. I mean, I tried it and it just was horrendous for me. And so when I started to change my shyness in an access consciousness class, I literally just sat there and listened to the unlocking that other people were receiving and that unlocked things for me. So, um, so <laughs> I'm going in all kinds of different no, directions. No, no, but it's, yeah. Okay. And, and ju just on that, because I actually think it's a great thing because you can get the one-on-one -on -one coaching, but you still, I think what you're doing is, and I explain what happened to me. I realized I needed to get, to be a good public speaker. And I went to a, a club in Wooch and 
I had to go with a friend, of course. I needed my comfort buddy. And I, I loved it. I said, this is definitely for me. He liked it, but he says, no, nah, I don't have time for it. And I was too shy to actually go back. And the reason that I joined Toastmasters, a new club opened up. And I said, everybody's going to be new. They're all going to be shy. This is the best thing. So, you know, the fact that you can actually sell it as something that, hey, this, you're going to be surrounded with people that have the same kind of similarities, you know, definitely works like well, it's it's true in the, some of the other things that I've done, the community aspect has been brilliant and people aren't really expecting that because I think people often don't view themselves as community people because they've had so much problems expressing themselves. And, and I know for some of the people who, who listen to the podcast and who've done other things with me, they're like, oh, so it's not just me. Because I think when you're facing this sort of debilitating shyness where it's really hard to say anything or even get out of the house, it can be so easy to feel that you're the only one on the planet who has that because other people seem to have the ease with being on social media and the ease with all their lives. And it's like, no, it's not true. There are many people who struggle with shyness. And my sense of it is there are many more people who struggle than have the guts to come on a program like Shining Beyond Shy or to take the step that you did and put yourself in the Toastmasters situation. For many people, it's easier just to hide away and not address it. No, absolutely. And you mentioned, you know, you have clients that don't even leave the house. I remember my great grandmother, she lived till she was 86 from when she was 40 she apparently left the house twice she was <laughs> extremely shy and i know it went through the kind of family and i was trying to break this i know that my mom was shy as well but overcame it i obviously was obviously shy but what i've done is with my kids like my youngest now he's eight my eldest she's 21 she's a teacher but what i did with both of them is basically i was kind of if i'd gone into the shop and they wanted something you go up and get it you know, you don't kind of take over and do everything. And mm. like with my son, I'm teaching him magic because, you know, he's he's kind of performing without even realizing it. And he's in a kind of creative school where it kind of copies the finish system where they're doing loads of stuff. You know, they're even singing. And, but you don't realize the skill set that you get when you don't have the fear of public speaking. Yes. Yeah, I love that. I, I mean, imagine being taught magic by your dad. <laughs> <laughs> That would have suited me. I didn't have anything like that. <laughs> and I actually had to learn it myself because, <laughs> and, and I even done two or three speeches in the club with the magic. And one of them, everything worked out and they were all in awe. Another one, every single trick, except for the last one. And I was so embarrassed. And the last one worked and they were all saying, that was brilliant. And I was like to myself, this was terrible. So, you know, I think we even beat ourselves up and it's the same on stage. You know, sometimes we're going, oh, I forgot to say this. I forgot to, we have a little thought going on in our heads. Nobody else knows what we were going to say. So stop beating ourselves up. Yes. And I mean, this is one of the things that I talk a lot, a lot about with my clients, because we have, we have the thing we call shyness. And far more detrimental is the things that we do to ourselves because we have the shyness. And I remember when I first started to change it and I was like, oh, wow, I never, I never thought that I could change it. I never thought I could change it so quickly. So when it started to unravel, I was immediately, oh, I need to be a facilitator of this. And when I became a facilitator, basically the shyness hadn't completely unraveled. And so I found myself in these excruciating situations where I'd be very publicly and very obviously shy. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't be shy. I can't be seen to be shy. And my own mentor very cleverly got me to see that I was totally in judgment of shyness and got me to release the judgment. And this is what I see with people. It's only when we're like, okay, I am teaching about shyness and sometimes I'm still shy. Okay, that's me. And you know, sometimes I still am shy. But for me now, the, the judgment of that has, has gone and that's how I've been able to move so much more forward with it because the judgment is so detrimental to us. And I think sometimes we have to take into account our moods. Like I can sometimes go in, I can be the life of the party, and sometimes I just want to kind of go into the corner and be myself and just keep, you know, I don't want to be surrounded by noise and people. And, and that's okay as well. And stop beating ourselves up. Yes. 
Yeah, it's really interesting you say that because I think some people assume that I was introvert and now I'm extrovert. I'm like, no, I can be everything. An omnivert. An omnivert is what we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure I was omnivert. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I, I see you're a coach as well. And I want to kind of go down that because I'm actually uh, looking at kind of doing the basically podcasting coaching because the fact that I have so many podcasts and you know I, I kind of done so many episodes over 500 at this stage and you know I've done courses and read 10 books and kind of see the flaws that's going on so I was looking at that and then I said okay marketing I love the marketing and then I was thinking do I need to just stick to one but I see that you've got three different kind of things and like you might talk about the different ones and what's your thoughts on that because some people are looking going they're doing a few things and others like that and you can cross promote that is such a good question and i would answer that <laughs> on my good days i would be like it's fabulous <laughs> and and i mean i guess it goes against what we're taught that you need to find a niche and you need to be known for the niche and i suppose what i really think about it is that people will notice what you're enthusiastic about. So, you know, you listen to us talking about shyness and public speaking. It's really obvious that both of us just totally are enthusiastic about what we're doing and people will respond to that. And my sense, and for me, when I started to specialize in shyness, it was almost like I decided that I had to put all my other stuff that I've been doing for many years out of the window, never mention it. And it was almost like I temporarily killed that part of my business. And I don't think we have to do that. Um, I think that we can be known for our speciality, but also be able to do other things. Absolutely. So with, with the three coaches, because you've got business coach, general life coach, and then the overcoming shyness. So like when you're promoting yourself, then are you doing it? on one page that it's you or do you kind of do it as separate entities on the different websites for each business? Yeah, so I've chosen to put Shining Beyond Shy separately for exactly these reasons that it was getting a little bit confusing. So I have Shining Beyond Shy separately and then I have my kind of main, if you like, coaching and workshop business, which started off very general and then went into specializing in self-confidence and business. And so I have that on a separate website. And I'm not, I'm not by any means saying that I've got this sorted or this is the right way to do it, but this is, this is what I'm finding is working for me because I found that the total specialization led to me not doing some of the other things I love. And I think I have to say this about me, that yes, I love Shining Beyond Shy. I love teaching these workshops and individual sessions, but there are other things that light me up as well in the coaching world. And if I, if I kind of shut that down, it, it's not as fun for me, let's put it like that. And I think, I think particularly when we're leading workshops and in sessions, our clients will really perceive whether we're enjoying it or not. And um, I realized that I was so super focused on shining beyond shy that I was losing some of the enjoyment and starting to kind of um, even actually <laughs> in a completely different business as well as revive some of my old business actually started to wake shining beyond shy up as well so I think that everything can you know if we allow it everything can contribute to each other no, absolutely and with the coaching because it's something that I I've been kind of looking at as I mentioned and I see a lot do kind of like the free call or the and I, I think you do it as well because I, I looked at your website you do a kind of introductory call I don't know is it 15 minutes or 30 minutes mm. but how do you look at that regarding time to conversion and do you have a kind of system to know yeah this is actually worth my while because you can have a great week having 40 intro calls and, and not convert any of them or you could have the opposite yeah I I guess, again, I go in phases with this. I, I became aware maybe six months ago that I was giving away a lot. And, um, and I had loads of stuff from the past that people could download from my website that was all free. And I realized, and I had a lot of people on my mailing list who basically had done free stuff with me and would sign up for the free stuff and download the free stuff. And I had to really look at that. and. So 
I guess that I, I, I'm way better at tuning in to see, to see whether somebody is genuinely interested in change or if they're just kind of, oh, you know what, this person, Fiona's offering a free session and so is the, and, you know, actually having 10 free sessions that week. And I think the other thing that has changed for me in this is that I can really see that when people invest money, they're going to get more change. And if I'm honest, <laughs> Up, and, up until maybe six months ago, I actually thought that was kind of a sales technique, you know, to get to draw people into your classes. But then I realized, oh, that's true for me. When I actually in, invest in myself something, I get way more from it. And so that's helped me to tune in and really notice if somebody is just there for the free stuff. And in a way, there's not a problem with that, as, as long as as long as I'm getting paying clients, it's like it's not that I'm saying I'll only contribute to people who are paying, but I think as well, having so much free stuff out there, it wasn't actually a favor to the people who are listening to me, because I think when people only choose the free stuff, they can kind of flit around and stay on the surface. Yeah, and I find that with a lot of times, because I mean, you can get loads of ebooks and free courses as well there's a lot i always find it's the ones that i paid for because i said i've paid for this i need to do it and i mean the books I, I buy physical books i make sure i read them but anything that's kind of free it's yeah i don't think we appreciate it might be even better but we don't appreciate it you know and having said that there's the odd rare person <laughs> and i think it is rare who really takes some of the free stuff uses it changes and um, often then starts to invest in themselves um, and you know maybe they didn't have the money at the beginning and they use some of the free tools to change themselves and then start to invest in themselves I did see that from time to time as well yeah no that's that's what I love I mean especially with podcasts and stuff like that because you know everybody can listen to a podcast for free and you know they can make change plus most you know a lot of people give free resources that they can download and get started but as you said you know if if it does get them to a certain level and then if their financial situation changes, you know, they can make a 10x difference to their life just by, you know, making a, an investment. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what about like the pricing of it then? Because I, I'm not asking you specifically what you charge per hour, but how you've come to it, you know, let's call it X and then how to know when to kind of increase it and are you underpricing yourself because people mightn't think they're getting the value or overpricing it because i'm 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 in that space at the moment now and i'm kind of thinking okay what yeah. do i charge what's going to be something that's acceptable to people yes so the way that i look at it is i i as long as I have a certain amount of money coming in, I mean, it's different if I'm really, you know, it's trapped for cash or something, but as, but as um, from when my business is kind of going along nicely, what I look at is how much money would I be happy to receive so that I'm not, I mean, I'm not living by the beach anymore, but I used to, so that I would actually be willing to be on my computer for half an hour or an hour rather than be at the beach. And, you know, in the past, when I started out, that may have, that was probably much lower than it is now. And um, because I have to be engaged as a coach and if, and also finding that sort of sweet spot where I'm like really engaged because I feel that my talents are being and my skill sets are being acknowledged. The other person as, as well, has to sometimes when people have to reach for the price like we were saying it, it means that they're more willing to be present and to invest and for me it's much more fun to work with people who are actually present and invested in the change so that's how i do it nowadays mm, excellent, excellent. and i see that you speak well second language is german and french i'm not sure are you fluent in them or well, I used to be. <laughs> it's funny, I was thinking, I, they've both come back into my life recently. I've been doing some um, translation for some fellow access consciousness coaches in both French and German. And I still have a fairly high level, but I noticed that I've lost from where I was, you know, pretty fluent years ago. So you've never actually done a workshop or anything in different languages? You just stuck to Not the yet. English? I 
It's funny you ask, because I'm talking about um, doing that in French. I realise that I just have to take the plunge. It's like there's not going to be a day when I wake up and my French is going to be good enough. It's like I think I just need to do it. Brilliant. And just finally, um, I'm, I, I'm curious of people's social media now, because everyone at the end of the day, whether it's for your podcast or for your coaching, we're trying to promote ourselves. I'm my... Yeah, I'm bamboozled with the amount of social media. But just what have you learned? What do you find works? Because everyone's trying to promote, whether they're a coach, a speaker, or whatever business they're into, everyone's trying to get more, more eyes on them. Yeah, so what works for me is, say, on my Facebook profile page, I'll, I'll just, put, I mean, I have, since COVID, I've had a slightly crazy lifestyle of um, traveling around with my big suitcase, which kind of has my facilitation clothes and my computer. And you know, I don't have loads, of, had this sort of slightly crazy lifestyle. So I'm often writing about funny things that just happen in my life. That's on my profile page. But I'll often kind of throw in something that's kind of self-developmentally, you know, that kind of relates to my work, but isn't obviously about hey come and join my class and then I have other places where I post videos and um, I, ha I do things like post little memes from my class so sometimes um, somebody who's in the class will write down something brilliant that I've said and we create an image out of that and put that on the story and so I like do I like the sort of indirect ways of doing it and I'm also experimenting with um, short videos, so reels on Instagram and maybe even TikTok. And I really, and, the, and it's just, for me, it's just fun, you know, sort of taking some, something around shyness and kind of acting it out a bit. And then, you know, and literally just 30 second videos and they're fun for me to create and they create a bit of a question in people's worlds. So that's what I'm playing with well, at the moment. And uh, like the TikTok, the only reason I set up TikTok is I wanted to do the magic with my son, but the <laughs> algorithms doesn't want children in it. So I do something silly, like boomerang with a bow and arrow or something like that. They get like a thousand views, whereas there'd be like three or four for him. So I realized, so I didn't really push it, but uh, I've been helping somebody recently on it with a language school and I told them what to do and it's working. So if you do a certain thing like what you're doing just specialize in say the, the shyness and everything and do stuff relating to that put in all the hashtags for that get the hashtags work on it and have your bio where you can have your website mm -hmm. i'm convinced tiktok is brilliant but what i would suggest is it's a time suck you can actually get into it mm -hmm. and start scrolling and scrolling and then you look and you go where did the last two hours go so i'm conscious of it and i i specifically now go only a certain time and i do it for this just to gather information because I, I i actually extract some brilliant stuff from it as well there's some excellent content on it but yeah yes. i i would encourage people as well to check out the tiktok it's uh it's one of the better ones yes yeah now I, i've heard stories of people just well, getting amazing numbers of people they don't know seeing what they're doing on TikTok. It's like it seems to be, as far as I understand it, the algorithm is different from some of the other um, social media sites. And it's much easier to get people who you don't know seeing what you're doing. And it kind of rewards you as well. You know, like if you're putting up regular content, which I have done with some of my podcasts as well. If you're, you know, if you put out your episode every Monday, brilliant. But if you're kind of haphazardly, your numbers won't reflect it and we, we know what to do we just have to be con consistent with it and when you see it works just keep doing it and that's yes yeah that's yeah it. yeah okay so listen Fiona it's been thoroughly enjoyable talking to to a fellow shy person who has overcome <laughs> overcome the fear and we've done it so basically if we can do it the listeners can do it as well don't like once you do it you don't go back you kind of realize you know, you, I, I always said I'd love to go back and slap myself into the head, <laughs> you know, when I realized how shy I was. But it is what it is. We are where we are. And then you just kind of, you know, benefit. And I love what you're doing. You're helping other people not to actually, you know, to get out of it faster instead instead mm -hmm. of us trying to kind of doing it ourselves. So that's that's, yeah. that's wonderful. So how can people get in contact with you, Fiona? Yes, I have my website, shiningbeyondshy.com. So you can go there. And if you're interested, 
and around overcoming shyness, then you'll find that there. And because it started, it started uh, faltering. So I, you might actually just repeat where where people can get in contact with you because I don't know did it come out on the audio. It might come out kind of bluttered, so you might and okay, no it. Yeah, so people can find me on my shyness website, which is shiningbeyondshy.com. And if you are shy, you can download my free resource, Five Steps to Overcoming Shyness, wherever you are. And you're also welcome to message me. And my email address is fiona at fionacuts.com. Excellent. And make sure I put the links as well as the podcast and everything in the podcast description, both on the audio and the video. So thank you very much, Fiona. Thank you. So that's all for the Speaking Podcast. You'll find all our episodes on speakingpodcast.com or on audio and video, as mentioned, and you'll find the links in the podcast description. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, five-star rating. It all helps. Until next week, take care.